Welcome to Chapter 6 of Head First JavaScript Programming. Chapter 6 is kind of exciting because this is really the first time we're interacting with our web page. We've primarily been using the console and alert to see what's happening in our code, but now it's time to make use of actual elements too. Now, you can learn JavaScript as a language in a way that has nothing to do with the web page. And it's a good thing to start with the basics that have nothing to do with the browser like we've been doing so that you'll know what you're doing when you do start working with browser related concepts. But of course, most of the time you will be using JavaScript in a web page. So it's time now that you know a little bit about how to do that because it's likely that you'll be using JavaScript in your web page most of the time. We start out with the crack the code challenge that we left you with at the end of chapter five. Hopefully you did that challenge and if you didn't, we might have to come and bust you. We're using this challenge to introduce an object, the document object, and a method of that object, get element by ID. And you'll be using both of these frequently when you're writing JavaScript to interact with your web page. You'll kind of get the flavor of how these work as you work through the challenge solution. And then we'll come back to these concepts in more detail. The document object is the central piece of what we call the document object model. That's the internal representation the browser creates for your web page when you load that page. And the document object is the key to accessing this internal representation. So first, we step you through what that representation is, and then we come back to how you can use the document object and one of its methods, getElementById, to access specific elements in your page. Once we have an element, we can do things with it. What does it mean to have an element from the page? Well, it just means that we have a reference to an element object, which is, again, the browser's internal representation of an HTML element you create when you write your web page. And just like other objects, an element object has properties and methods you can use to do things like change the content of an element or change an attribute of an element, which we'll do a little bit later in the chapter. We spend some time talking about inner HTML, which is a property of an element object, because that's an easy and common way to update an element's content. The cool thing about using JavaScript to change the content in an element object is that as soon as you do, you can see that change reflected in your web page. We give you a chance to get some practice with the DOM, and then we go back to try out our example in the browser so that you can see firsthand the content updating when your JavaScript executes. And we run into a problem. It doesn't work. The solution to the problem involves creating an event handler or callback function that's called when the browser has completed loading all the HTML in your web page and is ready to start executing code. It turns out that events are a crucial part of creating interactive web pages because interactivity means that the user of your web page is doing stuff. They're doing things like moving their mouse or clicking on buttons or filling out forms. And the browser's doing stuff too. It's loading your page or perhaps going out and getting more data from a web service. All these activities generate events and your code needs to be prepared to deal with them. So we introduce you to a basic event, the load event, and step you through how you can watch for and handle that event in your code. And of course, once you know how to handle the event, you can get the example working without a problem. Before we leave the chapter, we talk about a method of the element object, the set attribute method. And you can use this to change the class of an HTML element. So we take you through how to use that to turn some of the text in the web page red. Of course, there's a ton more stuff that you can do with the DOM, and we'll cover some of it in this book. But of course, if you want more, once you've finished learning about JavaScript, the core language, our book, Head First HTML5 Programming, has a lot more about using JavaScript to build interactive web applications. Like usual, finish up by reading over the bullet points from the chapter and doing the crossword to help it all sink in, and we'll see you in Chapter 7.